this with the question about, because I know he's getting ready for comps. Um, I'll pose the question and then I'm, I'm going to go get a refill if we'll keep, if we'll keep going on with this. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, since no subject proves its own science, why does Thomas start the summa? The, the no OGA? science proves its own subject, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> what did I say? You need no another drink, clearly, fellas. <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe I don't need another drink. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Since no science proves its own subject, uh, why does why does theology start with uh, the arguments for God's existence? It doesn't start with them. But so, I, I even no. remember... Uh, I remember... <laughs> I remember. Yes, right. Yeah, it almost starts. With, I remember even when we were in Hauser's metaphysics class. I remember he made like a big deal about this. Like, I thought this was the summa of theology. Like, what is metaphysics doing here? Well, and yeah. So I remember. So during our comps, I asked Carl about this question, and Carl's. I just remember, you you drained some of the clock by giving the. Given the panel questions, <laughs> man. No, oh no! You play. No, no, no. He no, no, no. tutorial. During the tutorial. Oh. During the tutorial. <laughs> Phil's not during... that clever, James. Oh, you know, that was <laughs> oh man, that's a, that's some 4D chess right there. I was gonna say, Hauser, <laughs> dude, Hauser wasn't on my board. How do you think I passed? He wasn't Turn the tables board. and start. <laughs> that's quizzing right. Well, your, uh, I'd like Fox. to see what you think about uh, the super yeah. beginning with. <laughs> When I was studying this very, very hard over my cops prep period, <laughs> that's I, right. Yeah, I, had all I just remember because I had asked Carl that, been like, "Yeah, like a science doesn't prove its own subject." So, like, what what is question two in the Summa Theologiae? And I just remember Carl was like, "You know, well, it it does belong to a science, or he said, particularly the the highest science, to defend its own principles against those who would object." Uh, like, so it, like it belongs to metaphysics. It actually belongs to metaphysics to dispute first principles, uh, even of the lower sciences, right? And see, so he was just kind of saying it, it would somewhat belong to theology as the highest science and as true wisdom to even properly dispute with one who denies God's existence, which is one of the first principles of theological science. Uh, so we just then we just started talking about well, what what belongs to what science to dispute what? And it was just, yeah, or or it was actually weren't we talking about uh, what is the whether when the first principle is disputed, whether that is rightly called demonstration in some sense? Oh, yeah. Well, I was, yeah. Because says, certainly, like, God's existence is demonstrated as yes. a result of the dispute. But, like, when you dispute first principles of speculative reason, you don't demonstrate. Yeah. yeah well, first principles by, can't, like, reductio, yeah. by exactly. definition, be demonstrated, right? Yeah. Right. Because a demonstration and, requires something prior. Yep. Then right. that right. So yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, what every in the, in the course of every science, right? You have the meat of the science, the actual science itself. But prior to the science, you kind of have this intro section of dialectic first, right? So when Aristotle, mm -hmm. you know, he's beginning the physics, he's talking about, okay, so what do people think? What, you know, um, yeah. you're not doing natural philosophy proper, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or when you're asking, um, or when you're just, yeah, asking about what, what the nature of happiness is, you're not doing the moral science, properly speaking, right? You're, you're engaging in the dialectic that's proper to the moral science, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not the activity of the science itself, right? Yeah, it's, it's certainly, yeah, it doesn't belong to the habit of the science. What do you call, it's, though? It's, uh, Go ahead. It's under the umbrella of the science, right? I mean, yeah. But it's not, it, like, what's, what's formal to the activity of the science is doing the demonstrations, yeah. which have the definition of the subject mm -hmm. as the middle term of those demonstrations, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's, that's engaging in the science properly speaking, right? Yes. But um, in order to do that, you have to define the science, right? You have to have a, have a, a consensus about what the nature of the science is, what its subject is, and how that subject is defined, right? Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, you have to do something first. Um, and it's obviously essentially related to the science, but if the science itself consists in demonstration, which is, you know, the very definition of science, right? Yep. 
um, then uh, what you're doing prior to it isn't the science, properly mm -hmm. speaking, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what the that's what dialectic is, right? You're not doing the moral science when you say, okay, well, happiness has to be something that's kind of self-sufficient and um, and and that's not ordered to anything else. Like that's 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 what's common about all the ideas about what happiness is, right? That's not moral science, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's dialectic. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that the same thing is going on um, with with theology and proving God's existence, right? It's it seems like what you're doing because Saint Thomas. Part of the reason why it's question two and not question one is because Saint Thomas is telling you in question one what exactly theology consists of mm -hmm. afterwards, right? Um, and he's saying that. Okay, well, it begins with principles. Every science begins with principles, right? Well, what are the principles? It's the articles of faith that are the principles, right? So if the articles of faith are the beginnings, then everything after is the actual conclusion of the demonstration, yep. which is the science part, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so what, is, what does that mean? It means then that um, if you're dealing with the articles of faith, if you're talking about anything specific to the articles of faith and not what follows out of the richness of the principle of the article of faith, then you're not doing science of theology, properly speaking, right? Um, well, maybe let me, I don't know, push on that just a little bit, right? Wouldn't you would agree? I think I've heard you say this, right? That like when Thomas is commenting on the scriptures and he's establishing principles right he's doing theology isn't he uh, what i've said before is that when when thomas is commenting on the scriptures he's doing theology but because he's not he's not arguing the content of of the um scriptures as divinely revealed he's not saying this is yeah. this statement is divine revelation and here's why yeah but he's certainly he's saying he's this establishing is, its content this is its the, meaning right yeah, so that's that's like taking the statement, mm. and the word was made flesh, and concluding. Okay, so if if the word was made flesh, uh, what you have is a hypostatic union. That's what you're. That's what you're talking about. That's mm. the kind of conclusion that follows from the principle of the revealed text, right? That's that's mm. theology. That's that's fine. Yeah, and doesn't um, he also? But he also disputes with the heretics in his commentaries on the on theology too, right? uh yeah what's your point that it still it doesn't it belong also to a science to like to refute errors no uh um, really i doesn't, doesn't aristotle say that it like it belongs to the geometer to not to dispute principles but to someone Was who draws a false conclusion from principles isn't the, that the answer because like the physicist uh at least also oh, in the physics he disputes with Parmenides, but not yeah. as a physician. So that's yeah, the but thing. even it's in like, even in the physics, on the, though, he's it depends on the error. Taking, yeah, it depends yeah. on the error. So yeah. he says at the beginning of in book in book one of the physics, he's like, look, if you're um, if you're talking about convincing a man that uh, being isn't one, then like you're you're trying to syllogize to a blind man about color. Yeah. That's his thing, like. You, it's obvious that being is not just one. If that's yes. obvious, and that's that's the position of Parmenides and Moses. Okay, mm -hmm. um, it's it's obvious in, that there's a diversity in being. Um, it's and it's not up to the physician, the natural physician, to to engage with that. Yeah. Um, so if I'm going to argue against that, I'm not doing this as a natural physician, right? Um, or if you're arguing that to a, a person that motion exists then you're not being a natural philosopher, right? The subject of the science is mobile being. So you cannot argue as a natural philosopher that motion exists. That's not, you can't, that's not what you're doing. If you're doing that, you're not doing natural philosophy. Yeah. Um, so if it, but if the error is about something that has, that has to do with the conclusion of a demonstration, yeah. right? So yeah. is, is quantity, or it is mobile being infinitely divisible. That's 
the the thing there that that statement is arguable by mm -hmm. the natural physician because that's a conclusion right? sure but it belong but the higher the science so like it belongs to metaphysics though to so like aristotle says i think right like you just said it, like natural philosophy doesn't dispute its principles with someone who denies the principles just the conclusions right, right? yeah but it, it would belong to metaphysics to actually dispute the principles yeah right yeah. And so I think that was that was the point. And I, th I think that's what Carl was trying to say, right, that it then it belongs to the theologian in that question about God's existence or even Thomas, even in the commentaries on scriptures to dispute with heretics. Right. To those who dispute the principles, the articles of faith or the contents of divine revelation. And it belongs to the theologian then to dispute that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm not saying that or I don't mean to say that uh, that. Um, because after a certain point, there's no, nothing else that you can fall back on. Mm. Like there's no other science behind it that you mm. can say, okay, well, that's obviously reserved for a higher science. So, um, mm. yeah, I think it's like I said, it's under the umbrella of the science of theology, right? But if you're talking about the essential nature of the science, sure, right? What that means is demonstration, right? that's what a science is it's the conclusion of a demonstration right yes yeah so that's... there's a difference between doing that mm -hmm. and defending a principle right yeah i think that book two or and book three of the metaphysics is metaphysics fine um where you're talking about defending principles and all that stuff or in book four where you're talking book about the first principle of, of uh of uh, you know being of non-contradiction or the principle of non-contradiction yeah that's fine um, but actually talking about the subject matter first and seeing demonstrations that fall out of that, that's the science properly speaking. Mm -hmm. You're doing metaphysics. You're yeah, doing according. Second, you're, you're using metaphysics in a secondary way, mm -hmm. I think, if you're defending principles. Yeah, the, like, yeah. The you're not definition attending of, to it as a science. Yeah, the actual way. definition of the science, like as, as you pointed out, right? book six of you know, the ethics too, right? Is, yeah, the, the actual, the definition of the science, like properly speaking, is the habit of demonstration. Yeah. But yeah, so I guess we're then like, yeah, to say that though, but it still belongs to a science, at least to the highest sciences, metaphysics and theology to dispute its principles. Right, but not it's according not, to its nature as a science. A, yeah, well, so not well, yet, well, not according, according to, to the what habit then, of demonstration. According to what then does it dispute? Them? According to its, according to its, position as first what about when a science like argues dialectically to establish a definition or a principle that it's going to use like consider how <laughs> aristotle argues for the four causes in physics too yeah right so he gives the four causes and then he considers basically every other kind of cause you could ever consider and reduces them back to the four yeah right so he's not demonstrating the four causes but he is arguing for them right yeah. He's so, just saying, how many ways can you say why about something? Yeah. Four. So is that, is, does that belong to the science of physics to do that? Uh, the way I say it, like I've said before, it, it's under the umbrella of the science, yeah. but it's, you're not doing, you're not doing the science when you're making a, an argument like that. You're yeah, engaging in the dialectic. You're up the science, or you're you're en that? you're engaging in the dialectic that's essentially related to the activity of the science of natural philosophy. So does does like you, yeah, like it seems to me that you know, it's preparatory. You have to argue for these principles if you're going to go on and use them in the science to make demonstrations. So preparatory or setting up for seems to be the proper sort of or. Not, necessarily proper or technical, but it's the way that these, this sort of stage of the science relates to the stage of demonstration, right? As preparation, as preparation. It's not the science, but it's the preparatory sort of inductive work, maybe you could even say, to the, the deductive work of the science. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think you're, I don't think you're forming universals necessarily. I just think it's safe to say that it's dialectic. All right. Well, that's certainly safe to say. All right. So there's a, can we say clearly, Phil, there's a dialectic preparatory stage 
uh, whereby uh, some principles are established by science and then that science proceeds. And then yeah. uh, yet again, some principles are simply laid down in a science and then defended in another science proper to them. Yeah, sure. Or, or uh, but it was to would the... it even be right to say proper to them? Like when we say something like, uh, we're not going to defend first principles in physics because we're going to defend it in metaphysics. Do we want to say that it's proper to metaphysics to do that? If we if we're if we're maintaining that it's just part of like the preparatory as, well just as first in relation to everything else. Proper in that sense. Yeah, so so here's what I'm saying. So um if you if you look at different arts and sciences in relation to each other, you can see something like in astronomy, um there's the um there's the uh Kepler's, you know, um law of planetary motion there's laws of planetary motion right and he, and he states that okay you have um, the areas that are traced out by um the planets in motion right mm -hmm. over over the same period of time are going to be equal even if the if even if the speed at which they go is different so closer to the sun they move faster which means they're making a you know, a faster, they're going around their orbit faster. Mm -hmm. um, and farther away from the sun, they're going slower. But if you, whatever, whatever the case is, this, if you, if you measure the same amount of time, you're going to, they're going to form the same slivers of area, right? So if you have like, here's the orbit, here's the sun, here's the planet close to the sun in, in a right. month and it forms this triangle here. Yeah, and yeah, right, right. Here's sure. a here's a month away, and it forms this kind of sliver, but it's a yeah. long sliver. Like, I understand. That's the same area, right? And it's like okay, but you're using some geometry to do that. It's like, show me that. It's like, well, that's not up to the astronomer to do that. That's mm -hmm. up to the science that's first in relation to astronomy, and that's geometry, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like it's first, relatively speaking. It belongs to the science that's first, relative to the science that you're engaging in. To defend its principles yeah right that's what i'm that's that's the that point makes sense. um that's good. i don't need okay. to i don't i'm not acting as an astronomer if i say okay these areas are equal okay it's like oh well prove that to me it's like, okay well i'm gonna yeah, the, take off my that. astronomy hat. yeah exactly I'll put on yeah. my geometry yeah. hat right, right. And i'll do that for you fine mm -hmm. um but we're not doing astronomy anymore just so you're clear just so we're clear that's not astronomy right. yeah so yeah, I think that's how it works. That Whatever's first in relation to the thing that you're doing mm -hmm. um, is is the science on which you you would fall to defend the principles of whatever science you're doing. Which is why I think it's important in question one that you see that theology is a subalternate science. Yeah, like it's. It's subalternate in the same way that astronomy is subalternated to geometry, right? And it's like, and it's like, okay, so what is a science that we're relying on to defend the principles of whatever we're getting in theology? It's the divine science, the like God's own knowledge of Himself, right? So how do I know that this principle that I'm laying out in theology is solid? It's because God. It's because that is a derived thing from the divine science. Yeah. Right. That's that's why you can kind of stop there. It's like you appeal you in theology. You actually do make an appeal to something else. Mm -hmm. But it's but the thing making appeal to is the divine source of the principle that you're laying out. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do I know that in the beginning, you know, God created heaven? It's like that's the conclusion of the divine science. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and obviously that that has its own implications in 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 our engagement with the thing it's like okay mm -hmm. well how do you how do you fall back on the divine science then it's like well really only god has it and the blessed have it so you can't really do that unless <laughs> um, well yeah 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 per se certainly but if he reveals it right is the that would be the principle you right. have access to it yeah so i mean it's i mean he can he reveals it Yes, um, but if that revelation comes into dispute, is what I'm saying. It's like oh, if you're yeah. if you're if you're arguing about the principles of a science, 
and the principles of the science that you're arguing happen to be theology, well, then you, you would, the rule is you look to the higher science to defend those principles, right? Well, what's the higher science? The divine science. So what's the defense? It's like, okay, well, God said that this is a matter of revelation. That's right. And that's, that's, there's your argument of defense. Well, there are ways to defend that are not demonstrative, of course, but to defend, I suppose, the probability of revelation. So like Christ knew this, right? He comes to reveal things to Israel and he knows they're not just going to take his word. And so he performs signs, right? And so the signs that he performs give credence or credibility to his words as divinely revealed. And we do the same thing, you know, uh, the apostles did the same thing. Of course, they worked signs and then later missionaries would at least talk about signs or point to signs that have been given. And, you know, one of the ones that Thomas points to is um, the fact that the church has uh, stood till today in a consistent manner. You know, he says, like, if you want to say that the miracles of the early church are not real, uh, then what greater miracle is there than that the church should be what it is today without any miracles at all? Yeah. Uh, that's the way he argues in the commentary on the Apostles' Creed. It's so that's that's it's Augustine's point. But is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's a good one, I think. But yeah. like the point is, there's we're not strictly just saying um, something like, oh, well, you know, you, that's it's the divine science. There's nothing else we can do. There is a way in which we can try to defend these principles um, without just saying, well, you got to know the divine mind or the divine mind has to have revealed it to you. Like, certainly that's true. Without the grace of faith, you don't know these revealed truths. But unless we can talk about them, right? We can give uh, reasons for credibility. Well, all, all my, my point is, um, if you're unlike, unlike, the astronomer who can take off his astronomy hat and put yeah. on his geometry hat. You, you as a theologian can't take off your theology hat and put on yeah. your divine science hat. That's my point. <laughs> it's like, oh, See, let me just, speak for yourself. Jay. That's right. Let, Maybe you let can. Me just, yeah, you yeah, ain't right. seen my divine science hat. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me just let me just consult with the beatific vision for a minute. Here. Uh, oh I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll this be right back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Phil, Phil's in ecstasy. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Uh, that was a good discussion.